Right, so I'm delighted to have our guest on here today. Could you give yourself a wee introduction and where you're from? Hello, my name is Amma Jane and I'm from Greenock. Beautiful, beautiful Greenock. Beautiful Greenock <laughs> indeed. So how have you been keeping Mama? I know you've been very active despite everything that's been going on in the world. Has it been a challenge maintaining your motivation? Um, it's been at, at the beginning of lockdown 2020, I would say it was a challenge because... I just came back from the cruise ship job that I had for five years and it was such a like set set like living income I had great just a great job and then coming home and not knowing what was going on and the uncertainty I, I found that quite challenging because I was basically alone with my thoughts and I was like right what am I going to do now because I've not I'm not going to be traveling for six months at a time I'm going to be stuck here in Greenock so um it was a challenge at the beginning but as soon as I as soon as I started to get the demos that I had been sitting on for years as soon as I started getting them out and started writing more I just felt like the weight lifting off my shoulders and it just it just came out naturally so so far so good <laughs> and it's always interesting to hear as well though because everybody's kind of went through a unique position with this lockdown and I always find it quite interesting to hear from creative people like yourself because everybody feels like boxed in for the a lot of time the first time in their lives and it, mm-hmm. it's weird how some people can be motivated by it and some people can find it quite ha- uh, hampering you know quite hard mm-hmm. to deal with but um, I think there's a good way to always look at it and it's a way to sort of be able to express yourself in a different yeah. manner you know. Yeah I totally agree not everybody's going to have like I'm not saying like lockdown has been like it's it, it has helped my cre- creativity a lot but there's days where I'll get at least two days in a row or more or a whole week where I'm just like oh, I can't be bothered with this I can't do this anymore like I'm just gonna go for go watch Netflix and just eat my, my weight and ch- chips and whatever but like you have days like that you've got to allow yourself days like that especially in lockdown because we can't help it we can't help it so yeah I believe that um you could be creative but you're also allow yourself down days as well uh you need to be kind to yourself is the, the right yeah, word because I think a lot of musicians tend not to be kind to themselves because they're always trying to go for some sort of target and mm-hmm. there's something just need to let themselves go a wee bit you know yeah. and then just enjoy the process yet because there was a time that when we began music where we, we done it because we enjoyed it mm-hmm. but I think like with positions that you're in like yourself when you're releasing stuff sometimes you can get so caught up in it you forget why you're doing it you know so it's important exactly. to always just enjoy the process yet. Mm-hmm. So um, you've just released your single Flame, which everybody should be listening to right now, by the way. Um, this has been your third release in around six months, and all the tracks have been very well received, and I think the same too. It can be nerve-wracking releasing music to the world, but is the process getting more comfortable? Um, more, oh, definitely, more comfortable. It's still stressful. Like, um, as, as an artist yourself, you will, you'll know, like, the whole process before you release a single is the most busiest month you'll probably have as a musician because you're you're sending out your press releases you're trying to obviously basically selling yourself as a musician like to put it politely but you're selling yourself because you need to make sure that the the song is heard by by everybody and received and if they like it review it so yeah I, I, I went off on a tangent there. <laughs> well, that's totally fine. That's what we want. But yeah, it is, it's definitely, it's definitely it gets easier as 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 it goes on. And it's only been my third one. But the first time, I swear, I, I had lots of panic attacks before I released Boy because I had no clue what I was doing. It was the first time I released something myself independently. And I thought I was going to, I was crying <laughs> like, before it came out. I was like, oh no, what's going to happen? Um, but yeah, it's getting easier, much easier. I'm glad it's gone easy for you because I think a lot of people that have listened to you for the first time will be thinking that you're someone that's been doing this for a sustained amount of time, but like the music you're creating now is so recent to you, you know, mm-hmm. and it's uh, it's just, it's amazing to see somebody just being able to look so naturally, like promoting yourself in the way that you're doing. Thank you. Um, and I know your sounding journal has had a revamp recently. Um, mm-hmm. Does the song change stylistically through the recording process of a new track? Um, it's more like yes, more through the but the lyrically, I believe that all my songs, they all they're all connected and and like like a good way they're all glued together in that way. But 
the production changes a lot because because of the people that I'm working with mm. and they they do the production that they make is purely through the lyrics and uh, the feel of the song so I would like to call myself I, I like the fact that it changes and I, I, I'm evolving and I think it's been a long time coming because I've not released music this is a, I'm 29 and I'm only releasing music now but I've been writing for 16 years so I feel like I'm, every single that I release it's like something that I should have done years and years ago so that's why the it's changing with every release it's getting better because the writing was getting better and um yeah I'm evolving and I and I'm like when it comes to music I'm really eclectic with my taste so um yeah I don't want to be like a one-trick pony I want to keep on revamping with every release because I, I can do it <laughs> and I think I it. it's, it's, it's interesting as well for me because like um some people like start off really early and then they try to push themselves at really from a really early age. But you've mm-hmm. had like a lot, like you've got. I can just tell you've got so much motivation to, to do it. But you've got all that experience behind you now, and you can properly take advantage of that. You know what I mean? And um, I it's just it's good to see that. Um, and it's sometimes like when we're starting out with things, I done it myself. Like I threw myself into it, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And it's good that you've got that kind of know-how and maybe mm-hmm. watching other people doing it as well to kind of say oh maybe this is the right thing today maybe this isn't it you know yeah yeah um yeah I, I do I do I do think it is important to have your own sound though it is important to have your own brand but at the same time I, I'm just when it comes to music I love from classical up to heavy metal I love all kinds of music and I'm like if I want to collaborate with an R&B artist, I'm going to do it. If I want to collaborate with a dance producer or like house music, I'm going to do it because I love all that music and I'm going to like, so that people are, are always guessing what's coming next from Amma Jane. That's that's what I would like. So you have influences such as Prince, Queen, Lady Gaga and such. How much did that as such as them help move the style of your practice for yourself? Well, um, I'm, I'm a big lover of... Again, as I mentioned, very eclectic when it comes to music. And I love all different types, especially Stevie Nicks. Like, she's my, like, huge inspiration. And artists like that, I believe they tell their their storytelling and their and their lyrics is just so perfect. Like, Freddie Mercury, like, obviously his voice told the story, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like, the lyrics were amazing, but his voice gave all the emotions that it needed. Gaga, her songwriting the stories that she makes, some of them don't make sense, but they kind of make sense to me because they're a wee bit like crazy and crazy wild child, Stevie Nicks. Like I, I, I think that's my, where I get the most influence is through the songwriting and the storytelling of a, of a song. And I just relate to it so much, especially with like the females, like Stevie Nicks. She's just incredible. Hi. I, I was, I was, was going to add that on and I try to always do this with every artist and of you. But like I always take the songwriting really seriously and mm. see like the the songwriting process for you, it's so like consistently well developed and I really enjoy the stuff you put into the words and your tracks. Does it like mm-hmm. does the writing process begin on a guitar? Um, it does. Um, it right. It, it either starts on an acoustic guitar, um, sometimes ukulele because I'm not. I don't really know that many chords on ukulele, but I get a good wee vibe, like mm-hmm. a very good storytelling vibe from from a ukulele and just by like pressing chords on like like synthesizers and my my wee midi keyboard here just doing a chord progression on that as well but basically would start on the guitar but mostly like when I'm writing songs the melody comes first with me so what I do is I'll just I'll put my phone on and I'll record whatever I'm doing even if I'm just messing about and then the melody comes out straight away or I'll I'll say a word like a word will come out randomly and I'm like oh that was a good word that was maybe I could write around that and Um, so yeah my my writing process is quite weird but the story comes out eventually because it's just me letting my my mouth go and letting letting stuff come out letting stuff fall out of my mouth um Mm -hmm. so that's where it kind of it all starts 
Aye, they, they call it in like meditation, like the monkey brain sometimes, when you try to get your mind to be silent, it all will do is talk. So, so oh. I think it's just letting yourself speak in it and letting things mm-hmm. come out. Um, it. And it's like another thing as well with your music is see like, for example, when you've got the idea there and you're writing a song, do you ever feel like a pressure to like finish it off in like a consistent way? Like, so say you've wrote off a song, you oh, the words are good, but then you have to finish it. Do you ever feel like, oh, this is a difficult chance to get this consistently at the end? Yeah, like like finishing basically finishing the story. You mean? Ah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like I find that yeah, I do. Like I, I've got you get the verse and the chorus, and the first verse and then the the chorus for the whole song, and you're like right, okay. And then when it comes to the second verse, you're right, okay. Well, the second verse needs to at least change up me- melodically a little bit more. Um, but then the words obviously, um, you need to you need to sit down and. Because you've you've had as you said monkey brain where it kind of well it comes out and um easily for the first verse in the chorus finishing off the song it is a wee bit of a like you've got to sit down and go right okay let's talk about a story now and it's all about um writing this the end ending so it does take a wee bit more time but but um yeah sometimes it just comes comes naturally though like it just depends on the vibe and the timeline if I've not got a timeline or a deadline for anything it just I feel like I, I, it comes more naturally but when there's a deadline and someone's like I want a song tomorrow and I'm like oh no <laughs> like I feel like I can't do it, it I, time. Well, like, definitely precious, isn't it? definitely um so how has it been communicating with your fans during the restrictions for live music have you gotten used to the idea of mostly everything being on social media yeah, I've loved it. I've loved being able to um transform the my brand. I kind of during the beginning of lockdown 2020, I t- like took everything off of um Instagram and just made it all because it was it had a lot of personal stuff on like more Amanda stuff. Aye. Um so I totally re rebranded myself, gave myself I'm a Jane name and made sure that the content was really good and I was I was uploading and the my Instagram skyrocketed and people have been I, I kind of know how to work it now with the hashtags and finding that fan base and yeah I, I, I love I love social media and I've always had a good connection with my followers and doing live gigs on Facebook and um do, like putting up like we we promo videos that I've made and I found it really nice during lockdown and I, and it has actually increased my, my social media um, knowledge because I, I've learned yeah. a lot. I've learned a lot of what you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So I have like... And I think, I think uh, sorry for interrupting you there, no. um, that, um, we have a lot of people that kind of do well on the social media channels. Something that I found is that a lot of them get a lot of communications with their fans tend to be just dead honest, you know what I mean, and open mm-hmm. and just just be quite unfiltered, you know, and I, it's, it's nice to see when people kind of reciprocate to that. Yeah, it's all just be yourself. Like, that's the, the number one thing that I noticed. Like, if you've got a video that you've got sitting there and it's um you you didn't post it because you you had your face, the face you were making made you look like you had a double chin or you had a big massive pluck in your face or whatever. But, like, I just kind of totally disregarded all of that because I, I did used to do it like never post anything like that because my face or the faces I was making when I sing but I'm like that's me that's that's the way I perform and that's kind of that then that like people like to see that people like to see you being yourself or in my live gigs I don't know if you like you've seen any of them but like I just kind of be I'm just goofy I just like I, right. myself and doing proud Mary with the acoustic guitar and doing like the the head waves and the dances you've just got to be yourself and that's and people love that people love right. when you're yourself and I think that that's the thing as well that probably takes people to be surprised with yourself because um, like when they see like obviously your videos and all that and then photos and all that, it's like, oh, it looks very serious. But then they see the, the live videos and that and it's like, a, it's like a pure contrast. And I think mm-hmm. people appreciate that, you know what I mean? Because it's like, and the way I see music as well sometimes is like some people can try to treat it like a bit like acting, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, this is a persona that they get into for music. How do you see that for yourself? Do you see it like as a persona when you're performing music or you're going into statement of character or something? Um, oh, that's a good... Like, I, I would say... I'm a Jane is definitely a personality and it's definitely... It's definitely... 
my personality mixed with my artistry like um Hi. um but i would i would say it's it's not really a persona i think it's more just me being being the artist that i am and mm -hmm. whenever i do like obviously the the pictures that i post some of the pictures like me try to be like vogue and like I, I, try to be like all pouty that's just for the for the content and for for press as well like for for uploading onto websites and whatever but um when it comes down to videos just i try and be myself as much as i can like if you ever see a video of me it's, it's i'm not putting anything on what you see right. is what you get with me and, and that's what i try and put across so it is definitely the ama jane persona is me it's me Aye. like down down to the down to the bone i know that's brilliant um mm -hmm. and it's Again, it's stuff like that just helps people connect with, with an audience as well. Because I think when they're, when they're doing music, a lot of people are like, they're trying to filter themselves to reach like the highest demographic. But I think that the people that should matter are the people that are really going to connect with you, you know? Exactly. Exactly. You've got to be like, be something that they want to relate to. And like, um, don't be the like, like on Instagram, as you know, like there's just a lot of fake profiles and re obviously real people, but like just not not showing the real the real person yeah. behind the camera. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, like I love using effects and and like from for my pictures, like putting a nice wee tan when I've because like uh, when the hell am I going to go on holiday? Like I'll just give myself a wee tan. That's that's good. That's that's absolutely fine. But but as soon as you start filtering out. The real you and the real personality that's that's something I, d I don't really i don't like at all so try and just uh, keep keep real keep it real and just show people who you are i think people can get like again scared day like what you're saying and i think it's something that comes with experience as well is just learning to be yourself because the majority of people that, that listen to you are going to love you and some people are always like paying attention to like the slight negatives that people might say you know what i mean and they should be focused on what they enjoy about you um and I think again like that it just takes a lot of the kind of perseverance and just passion again and just reminding yourself why you're doing what you do you know exactly. what I mean and if you start faltering it then it, you lose your you lose the edge you know yeah you, you the I, I, was, I can't even I don't even know the word but it's just like the raw the rawness of yourself if that makes sense I don't know just you lose the uniqueness Aye, because you imagine that if somebody was sent to Lady Gaga or you're cammed in the costume a wee bit or something like that. Like imagine somebody were to say that to her and like she was take it on board. Or... She did. She did do that for her artistry. That was her alter ego. That was her, but it was still her personality. It was still it was her alter ego, but it was just basically her getting to showcase how crazy she is, and she doesn't really give a crap about what anybody else thinks about her. Aye. And, and I think there needs to be a lot more artists out there that just let let get your freaky self out there and don't worry about little minor things that people say about you or say think they're what they're going to think about you. Just be yourself, and um, you'll get so much credit for it. You will. Um, you will. I believe. See, in, see, in terms of the the live videos, and we're talking about like. Instagram and Facebook and everybody like try to like capture the like the perfect version of themselves. Mm -hmm. Was that scary at first doing like the live streams and stuff like that? Or was that um, quite natural for you? Quite like with being on cruise ships, I, I honestly it it brought out my personality more and my confidence just because I was like people like me for who I am and they don't they're not gonna judge one little bum note that I hit and stuff so on cruise ships I definitely think my personality and my confidence boosted performing mm -hmm. live so whenever I came home and I was doing all these live gigs I was like all nervous and goofy and like oh like like cause I, that's just who I am like I like I get nervous before I go on stage anywhere I'm always backstage going oh my god I feel like oh. but like that's that's the way I am and and I loved I loved doing the live gigs especially the the rock the lockdown page when that was big during lockdown, I remember my video got so much likes. It got it was like a hundred thousand views or something, and just purely because I was outside the back, it was one day I had a wee yellow dress on, and I was just kind of being goofy. I was like, oh, uh, 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 and people were like, oh, you're so cute, and like I'm like, 
oh thanks <laughs> like because I was just being myself and I, I, I find the live stuff comes naturally because I just go on and I let the music take over the brain and Aye. just be and I think as well people that can kind of play with the idea of being quite uh, goofy on camera I, I think that's like part of like a like quirky personality though in it like that's mm-hmm. people that play on sort of being a wee bit nervous or more like just da, 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 you know what I mean just yeah. be a wee bit silly like it's it's interesting to see but some people that have got naturally quirky personalities don't realise it. They see sometimes as it being like a flaw. Oh, I don't yeah. come across as presentable. But again, it's something that you again you learn through experience. Um, yeah. So, is there any plans this year with your music you hope to achieve? So this year, definitely going to be loads of music from myself. Um, I've applied for some funding just to get a, an EP recorded and released within this year hopefully hopefully in the summertime um we've got the songs the songs are all there it's just about getting presenting a nice wee package and um hopefully maybe getting a wee vinyl made up because i know that i've got some people that will buy it and i just want to have my own vinyl in my house and play it on on my record machine but um i do that's that's the plan this year is just to get this ep out and keep writing keep right. writing and collaborating i've got a couple of people that um i, will, I won't mention because it's quite a wee bit top street secret but i've got a couple of people that i'm writing for just now like collaborating and it's different a total different style of music so it's exciting so i need to do that today actually <laughs> that's my plan that's for the brilliant. day writing brilliant like the music that you're creating right now is it's something that generally i'm becoming a lot more endearing to as well and stylistically it's like hard to kind of pinpoint what kind of music it is with you because people can say oh the music's like that but see when somebody asks you or oh, what does your music sound like do you ever find it quite hard to kind of illustrate that to them i do i do because i again being being the eclectic mind that i ha- that i am like i love different types of music so i feel like there's just so so many different elements of different styles in there um what i would say is it's very bubblegum standard pop when it comes to like the verse the code the verse pre-chorus chorus verse bridge all that kind of the standard um pop song writing way um but i think the lyrics are so hard hitting and and cutting edge like they, they're very almost gritty to the sense of uh-huh. gritty and like underground, like Nyquil Dreams is such a such a bop pop song, but when you listen to lyrics, it's it's about basically stalking someone and being a stalker. So it is quite it's quite a, and you're you're tripping on Nyquil, <laughs> which uh-huh. is night oil. It's like a, a cough medicine, but like as it, it, I think for me, it is very hard to describe because. I just love I love all all types of music, but I would say it is very it's standard pop with a bit of grunge and dreaminess and grittiness to it. So it is, maybe it's a new genre of pop. Who knows? <laughs> you, you're, you're a trailblazer then. <laughs> maybe it's a new kind of style. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I can't explain it. Aye. So it's been great in having you on. Uh, how can we find you online? So you can type in Amma Jane because I've changed it officially to Amma Jane. It was Amma, but there was another Amma out there. So I was basically fighting with her because she's awesome. Um, So I changed it to Amma Jane and you can find it almost everywhere now. Amma Jane on Facebook, Instagram. Um, You'll see my wee coupon up there. YouTube, um, Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. You'll find it by typing in Amma Jane. Um, and yeah. You, you you should find it all perfectly. Thanks for coming on, Anna. Thank you so much. <laughs>